Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're about 50 minutes late, but um, uh, this is Real Talk with Deb and Will, and Deb's not here. Deb had a work thing downtown she had to do. You probably saw in the video I, did, uh, that I already did that I dropped her off down. It was crazy, uh, but she is okay. I got a text from her a little bit ago. She is with her family, her Suncoast family. Hey, Paul and, and Michael, uh, what's going on, everybody? Um, so we are going to um, we're going to continue. Uh, the, the the fact of the matter is that we have the Debbie anyway has <laughs> has viewers that uh, that are loyal that expect a program. So um, we're going to continue to do just that. What's up, T Bit T Briggs? What's up, man? Um, so this is um, how we're going to do it. Uh, I want to talk about uh, some things that or or a couple of things while while Deb's not here. Yep, while well, she's not here, uh, I'm going to talk about how to stay married uh, and a husband for 31 years. Uh, you know, it's interesting. It, you know, it's interesting to me that not that that this is you know what in a lot of people's eyes has become an accomplishment. I'm not even sure why. I guess I was I was made I was made to be married, uh, and and I understand there are people who who are not made to be married. They're just not made to be married, and I'm probably one of the least likely people that you would think from the you know from the exterior um, that's made to be married. Because again, like you guys who who watch all the time know that I'm an only child. You know what? I grew up an only child, Haley. Um, uh, that I'm an only child, and I'm really used to getting my way. I am so I am so used to getting my way and doing things the way I want to do it. I am, and I've and I've and I've always been that. I've, Frankly, I've always been that guy. Um, so those people don't usually, first of all, they don't usually get married. And if they get married, they don't, they don't usually stay married. Uh, but you know what? There was a, a transformation for me. Um, I got some advice. And um, it's, some, it's some advice that I followed. And, 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 and it's basically, it was from my father-in-law that basically said, you know what? It doesn't matter who's right, as long as it's right. It doesn't matter if you win the argument, as long as you win. As long as y'all win, it doesn't matter who wins the argument, as long as y'all win. And my own, you know what, and, and I've done videos of what my childhood was like um with my parents so you can check those out uh i'm going to post those in the you know in the things uh i may even put up a card right there um that way i can do that neat edit i can put it right there uh when i say there um I, you might even you know i i watched the video um that um i you know what that that was my upbringing and my exam my example negative example on, on how marriages should go and how this should work. Uh, and I was frankly hell bent on not living in that terror for even a, even a short amount of time, even a short amount of time. So, you know what, whenever you're, and, and some of you may have, some of you may have similar um, backgrounds, but the the danger is that you try so hard not to be that that you never become whatever you are. You understand what I'm saying? You you never become whatever you're going to be because you're trying so hard not to be your dad, or you're trying so hard not to be like your mom. Uh, and then you and then what you don't end up being is yourself. So your spouse never knows who the hell you are, right? Because but because inside you're you're trying so hard not to be like your parents. You know, I joke uh, with Debbie all the time that you know what we, we we spend the rest of our lives trying to overcome our upbringing, our childhood, right? Um, but the piece of advice about it doesn't matter who wins the argument as long as y'all win. You know, it doesn't matter as long as you win. Doesn't matter who's right as long as it's right. It was very, very helpful to me because 
that allowed me the the freedom. Hey, Cindy, um, that allowed me the freedom to take a little pressure off me, right? Not that I don't think things were important. Um, that's very true. Boy, oh boy, if you get to wake up in the morning, uh, you're right. Uh, but it took a little pressure off me that I had to be right, that I had to be the dominant one in the house. You know what? I, and, and because of my upbringing, um, I was afraid that that trying to be, a, you know, the dominant one in the house uh, was going to lead to what I grew up with. You know, sometimes as much as people try to back away from how they grew up, they end up being just like their parents. You know, you know, the, you know, oh, it's, it's my honor, Cindy. Uh, they end up, no matter, no matter how much they end up being just like their parents, no matter how much they try, because wherever, you know, what focus goes, you know, attention goes, focus goes, you go that way. That's where your energy flows to whatever you're looking at, to whatever example you're trying not to be your mom. You're trying not to, and you know what? You end up being just like them, don't you? Don't you? Yes. So the idea is you've got to be you so much. So it was important to me that that pressure was sort of relieved. That was sort of lifted off me that, you know what, that it was the relationship that, that had a life of itself. It was the synergy of the relationship. It was Debbie and it was me. And then it was this thing that we were building that we both had to take care of. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get what I'm saying, right? I'm not just being all sort of new age weird, right? But it's the truth. And I think that this is what, I, I don't think people understand this. I think that people think that that relationships or especially romantic relationships are something else. After 31 years, this is kind of how I look at it. Now, you can listen to Oprah if you want to, or you can listen to people who write books. Hey, Yvette, um, you can listen to the people who do that kind of stuff, who, who, who either have been divorced 15 times or have never been married, who don't have any kids, or all their kids are on drugs, um, if you want to. Because, like I tell Debbie all the time, people will do whatever the heck they want to do anyway, because they do, because they're people. Um, but it's how I think about it in my brain. And, and when somebody asked me, uh, you know, there was a young man here just now who was looking at doing some yard work and you know what, uh, for a company, I don't think we're going to go with him, but, um, he gave me a price and I said to him, um, I asked him if he was married. He said, no. And he said, and I, and I said, this is the deal. Never spend dollars without telling your wife, unless it's on her. I think the number was, $500. Don't spend $500 without telling her unless it's on her. And if it's, and if it's on her, you better be right. <laughs> you better be right. She better have already told you what color, where it is, where you can find it, where the best deal is, and the amount of money to spend. Otherwise, don't do it without talking to her. And it seems like you know what, to, to the outsider, it seems like you're subjugating yourself. No, I'm taking care of the, I'm trying my best to take care of the thing that we built. Oh, we're built, and we're still building. After 31 years, we're still building this relationship. Normally, if you guys watch the show, I'm sitting over here, right? And Debbie is sitting here. I miss having her here. And the thing between us is not the microphone. It's the relationship that is that is changing. It's growing. It's becoming denser and more, you know what, denser and more malleable at the same time. You know what I'm saying? It's getting stronger and thicker, but more malleable because we've been through enough to be able to not everything that hits the relationship is going to crack it wide open. You know what I'm saying? So 
this is how you have to look at, this is how I look at being married for 31 years. I'm still, I am still building my relationship with Debbie. And as you grow day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year, decade, when it turns into decade to decade, if you think about that you guys are building something, you know what? And people say, well, you're building a life, you're building a family. But that, that's all that stuff is contained inside this ball of light called your relationship. And that must continue to get built. Because you can build a business together. People people get married and they start their own business and they build it together and they and they stay up all night and they you know what and they cuss and they cry and they get it done and it's successful and they got employees and they do all that stuff and then it's built and then they sell it and it's gone. They spend all their all all their the married life raising kids and and getting them you know what be, being great citizens and great people and then they marry them then they go to they spend the money on college and they marry them off and then they have and then they're gone. So they've built a great family. They've built a great business. And then five years later, after the kids go and if they sell the business and they should be doing great, they get divorced. Because in all of that, they've not built the relationship. All those things I've talked about should be part and parcel of the relationship. They should be satellites, actually, around the relationship. The business that you built together is a satellite around the relationship. The, you know, the kids should be a satellite around the relationship. The, the house should be a, hey, Cecil, uh, should be a satellite around the relationship. You know what I'm saying? It is the relationship that is the most important thing. It is the center of the marriage. You know, I'm here. You know, I sit here and Debbie's here, right? Well, here, here. I don't know. I can't do it right now. Uh, here, in between us is this relationship. That's what we're building. And if you think about it that way and that you're always going to Hey, what's going on? What's going on, EJ? You're always going to build the relationship and that you're always building a, you know, a, a, you know, a relationship. You know, my, my brother-in-law who's been married longer than me, I think, Cecil, how long have you and Julie been married? Uh, he's going he's gonna to write that down in, in, the, in the thing. Um, understands that the relationship is always growing and changing and again, becoming thicker and denser, but more malleable at the same time. You know, when you're just getting married, your, your your relationship may be like, it may be like bone china. It's pretty, it's shiny, but it chips easily if you're not, if, if you're not super careful with it, right? Not that as you get older, you're not as careful with it, but you know what? As, as it gets older, it gets more dense and harder to damage. Now, you can still screw it up. People do all the time. But I think people screw it up because um, they've not taken care of the core of it. It, you know, what I was watching, <laughs> watching, watching Last Man Standing. Anybody watch Last Man Standing? I love that show. I just do. Um, and um, Tim Allen's character, uh, Mike Baxter, was um, talking about. Uh, long-term marriages in and relationship. Uh, you know what? Having a wife like his wife and having a wife like Debbie is like having a classic car. Um, it's, you know what? You have to take care of it. You have to take care of, of its little idiosyncrasies every day. I love Last Man Standing. Uh, you have to take care of it every day. You know, it's not much, it's not much work, but you got to do it all the time. You got to take care of it. And then what people, people notice is like, wow, that's a beautiful classic car. And do you know what? After a while they go, golly, I want one. Wish I, I wish I had one of those. And how many people who, who, who are watching, whether you're watching live or you're watching later, um, look at people who have long-term relationships. 
that are good that they wish they had. You get told, we get told all, we get told all the time. We get told all the time. Golly, I hope that, hope me and my wife can stay married as long as you, you know, you and Miss Debbie stay married, you know. They congratulate us like we've won the, like, like we've won a gold medal, like we've climbed a mountain. And the fact of the matter is that we have. Because it's about working consistently on the relationship. Let me give you a, 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 an example. This morning, uh, my wife had this thing at work at the convention center. Um, and she's told you, she, you know, she deals with a little anxiety. Um, so she, she didn't want to drive down to this point. I mean, she is perfectly capable of driving herself. <laughs> There's no driving Miss Debbie. That's got to happen at this point in her life. It doesn't. Uh, my wife is perfectly capable, capable of doing whatever the heck she wants to do. That's exactly right, Cindy. People don't want to put in the work. People don't think there should be any work. I think that that's, a, that's part of the new narrative, that there shouldn't be any work. It should be easy. Nothing worth having is easy. But anyway, so, so she asked me, asked me last week, if I would drive her downtown. Because driving downtown is horrendous. And it's worse than ever. It's worse than I thought. Um, and I've got a video. I did a video in the car on my way back. Um, here on my own page. Hey, Kathy Dwayne Box. What's up, baby girl? Um, you know, so anyway, so she's, again, she's perfectly capable of driving herself, but because, and she's talked to you about this, she she suffers sometimes with a little anxiety. She would rather be driven in any of those situations. And I could have slept. I could have, I could have slept because I was up late working on, the YouTube channel. Uh, I think I think I finally crawled into bed about quarter to three, and um, she had to be downtown at eight o'clock. That give you a timeline. And uh, but you know what? I what I knew what I knew was that I was going to get up and drive her downtown. Period. How's she getting home? Well, my son's going to go pick her up. Alice is going to go pick her up. Um, Again, my wife could have driven her car downtown and parked and done all that stuff. She's been completely capable. But uh, my son's going to go pick her up. And if for some reason he can't, but I believe he can, I just talked to him. Um, she's going to Uber home because my wife can do that kind of stuff. She can do whatever she needs to do. But that's one of the things about taking care of the relationship. I want to make sure that if I have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning on a day that I don't have to, I'm going to take care of her. I'm going to make sure that her, you know, what her little bounce with anxiety or lessened however I can. Why? Because I need to take care of her. She's my classic car. I don't want to see that stress in her face. I don't want to see that stress manifest in her body and her health. I don't want to. So if I have got to do a little something in the morning to take care of that stress, I will. It's every day. It's the dishes. We've talked about that. Nobody likes doing the dishes. No one likes mopping the floor. So if sometimes I gotta I got I gotta do I gotta wash some dishes or clean up the kitchen or mop the mop a floor or vacuum a floor or make a bed. Why? Why? Because it takes care of the relationship. It fu it funnels into taking care of this relationship thing that I'm that we're still building and taking care of. This is the part that people don't get. My opinion. This is the part that people don't get. Cindy makes a great, uh, a great comment that most people are not willing to put in the work. And, 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 and I'll say again, I think most people don't even realize it should be work. I think people get told that it shouldn't be work. It should be easy. Nothing worth, worth having is easy. Nothing that's going to last is easy to maintain. Nothing. Nothing. Everything required, anything worth having requires work. Anything that has any value 
requires work in lots of it on a daily basis. So how do you stay married and a husband for 31 years? First of all, you have to get that revelation. First of all, you have to get that revelation. And I am thrilled that I get to do this, honored that I get to do this, because we get to tell people, because a lot of people don't know. I don't think a lot of people are being are being, being told the truth, because the truth is always hard, isn't it? The truth is always hard. Especially when we have to do something, the truth is always very difficult. The truth takes work. The truth makes you have to change. Well, I don't want to change. I like the way I am now. I like the way I don't want to have to change. You shouldn't have to change. The best part about being married is that it makes you change. It makes you different. And if you do it right, it makes you better. You hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? The best part about marriage is that it makes you change. And if you do it right, it makes you better. It makes you better not just as a, as a spouse. It makes you better as a human being. It makes you, <clears throat> there's no way that you can be uh, a good parent or the best parent you can be if your spousal relationship isn't, isn't good. Now, I'm not throwing rocks at single parents. I'm not. My mom, for the most part, because, again, my childhood was such as it was, acted as a single parent. I think she did the very, I think she did the very best she could do with the, um, the tools that she had available to her and the resources that she had available to her. Um, and I think most people do. Most people who are, who are caught in, that, in, in those situations do. Everybody's, everybody's going full speed. Everybody, everybody's, you know, in fifth gear going as fast as they can and hard as they can with whatever tools they have. Some people are driving Ferraris. Some of us are driving Pintos, 74 Pintos, 74 Pinto station wagons. <laughs> you know, some of us are doing the best we can, right? So I don't look back, you know what, as bad as that was, I don't, I don't look back at my parents. I don't look back at my father and go, you know what? Every time I screw up, this is your fault because you didn't give me the right example. I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for blaming him for everything. Um, I'm 58. I'll be 59 in September. And um, at this point, I should have learned some things on my own. And praise the Lord, I have. I have learned some things on my own. Uh, let's see what time is it. Okay, so we're going to, yeah. So I talk about the relationship and it's kind of like a sphere. You can see I'm doing this thing. It's like a sphere that I'm building, that, that, that Debbie and I are building together. And it can, and we continue to build it after 31 years. Our, and our son has grown. Um, we are in the, I don't want to say the twilight of our careers. <laughs> but we're not the kids who are, you know, who are fighting and scrapping to get to the next thing at this point in our careers. That's not, that's not, that's not who we are. That's not what we're doing, you know. We're not cruising yet on the slopes, um, but we're not. You know what? We're not in. We're not in there every day throwing punches to um, get to the next level in our careers. Um, that's not who we are right now. Um, that's not. Who, that's not what we're doing. But what we are doing is this. We, what we are doing is um, building taking this time where we don't have the same pressure. Excuse me. Making sure Deb is not trying to get a hold of me. Um, where we don't have the same pressures as we did before to work on us. You know, that's why we do this show together. And that's why we do a lot more with each other together. We probably talk more about important stuff in our relationship now than we ever had before. And it's cool because we, because we both know more. <laughs> so it makes it easier, right? Uh, so we're still, so that's, that's how I know 
that this relationship thing is still growing and changing and building. <clears throat> now, I'm going to spend a minute or so talking about what's the core of that relationship. Some people put all sorts of things at the core of the relationship. People put looks, money, success at the core of the relationship. What needs to be at the core of your relationship is Christ. There isn't a better core to build on as far as Debbie and I are concerned, is concerned than Christ. There's no better core to build on. Because that core, the core of Christ is so dense. And now, let me... Let me be a science. Can I be a science nerd for a minute? Well, of course I can be a science nerd for a minute because nobody here to stop me. Um, in space, you have things like black holes, you have planets, and because of the density of their of of, of a planet of the Earth, for you know, what happens is that it's so big and so dense that it has its have any idea I don't have any idea uh, what happened it just ended I don't know what happened I don't have any idea um, but in any case I wanted to finish I wanted to finish up see Debbie's not here so of course it didn't work you know I had, I had a technical problem um, but anyway core I mean at the core of our relationship is Christ Christ is the core Christ is dense and that we ship draws everything unto it so it's firm and keeps everything in the proper orbit so that's how it's done and if you can do that i mean again if um you're if, if you're not married yet and you're looking to be married then that's something you have to consider first thing you have to consider um if you've been married a little bit and you're wondering if you're going to be married a lot of bit for a long term if you're married for a, for a small amount of time and you'd like to be married for a, 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 a longer amount of time, and you've seen your friends and people that you know um, get divorced, and you don't want to, and this is something that you have to consider, something that I think that you should consider for sure. And if you've been married a while, 20 years or so, and, and you think that, yeah, that maybe things are in not the right shape or things aren't as good as they should be, Consider what's at the core of your relationship. Consider what's what what's orbiting and what should be order, or, or orbiting your relationship, and is it at the right level? Is it bashing into the in, in, into your relationship and causing problems? Kids, work, sex, whatever. Is it, a, a, do you have, are things orbiting your relationship as they should be? That's really the key. If you want to stay married, you want to be a husband for 31 years, you better start looking at some of this stuff and you better start taking it seriously. All right, well, before Facebook shuts me off again, I don't know what this is, what that was about. But in any case, my wife's not here, so until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Peace. Bye-bye now. That's great. How I can't get it to quit. <laughs> it quit on its own before. Now I can't get it to stop. Nice.